telephone book is very helpful. Our friends are in it, like Robert Martin. Our doctor is in it. The television repairman, the bicycle shop. Hey, it's Don, the Osh Professor here. Today, we're going to give you another bolo. Today, we're just going to talk about telephone books. As crazy as that sound, it's something that's actually going by way of fad because everybody looks them up online or uses their cell phone pretty much these days. But telephone books have been collected for quite some time. They're nostalgic. Um, they, they are a look back into the past. They have addresses and other information. Genealogists actually use them in some cases as well, too. But we're going to hop over the screen right now, and we're going to talk about telephone books. Say, let's pretend we're at a talking animal circus. So here we are with telephone books. Now this is Johnstown, PA, and I believe this is where the flood was. So that might have some reasoning why this one sold for around $300. But in general, vintage early telephone books do sell. You're not going to make a fortune. You're not going to retire on them. You're not going to find a ton of them, but they do show up fairly regularly. Usually if I'm lucky enough, um, I can find several at the same time from the same city because people wouldn't always throw them away. Usually they're in garages, attics, basements and things like that. I don't worry so much if they're tattered a little bit or they have issues. It's the collectability of the thing itself that's the, the key here. So again, this one's just around $300 for this one here. It's not a huge category, so you know, you're just going to have to run into them. Most foreign ones from certain areas do very well. Now this is the protectorate of Bohemia, um, Czechoslovakia area, Prague. It's German occupational area. 1940. Uh, it's an interesting item. It has a nice, neat, unique sticker on the front, too. And it basically went for $300. You know, you'll find these from overseas many times, but a lot of people brought these back after World War II, so you will find some foreign ones over here. Here's just another example, Egypt Railways Guidebook. It has telephone numbers in the whole works for all of the generalized area of Alexandria. $200 on this one. Now, here's one from California. Just like any other thing, California uh, items do sell very well. Most California actual telephone books do sell for around $50 to $100 on average for vintage ones. Another perfect example, $128 for this one. Same city, another $128. Same person selling it. So, again, the same buyer, I would imagine, bought both of them. Here's a Washington, D.C. one from 1947. I've had one of D.C. from the 40s or 50s. 100 bucks or better is what most of them go for. These sell very well because of the politicians that are in them as well, too. So 140 bucks. Another one, 140 bucks, sold from the same one who sold the last one to the same person. So here's an Oakland, again, California, 125 bucks. Again, we're, we're not going to look at every big detail on these. You can see it has some issues at the top. It's tattered. It's torn. Sometimes there's loose pages. Sometimes pages are missing. They still sell. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the greatest, the most sensational talking animal act the world has ever heard. Introducing the lion and the minor bird. Miss Myrtle Minor Bird speaking. Wow. How are you? Please don't roar at me. What did the lion do wrong, Jimmy? You don't have to shout into the telephone to be heard. That's right. Just use your normal speaking voice and speak directly into the mouthpiece. <laughs> I'm sorry, Myrtle. Detroit Telephone Book, 1959. Now they've got Ford, GM, and Dodge. The car dealers and companies were in here with their addresses and phone numbers from the day. That's why it's collected. Motor City collectors and actual car collectors in general may have wanted this specifically. So 100 bucks on this one. Here's a Los Angeles one, 100 bucks. Now, this one's a hardbound edition, so it's worth a little more than normal. This wouldn't be worth as much as some of the other California ones, though, just because Los Angeles made a ton of them. Um, so if this wasn't a hardbound book one, it probably wouldn't have went for as much money. So 100 bucks, as I said. 
Now here's a newer Russian set from 1984 and it still went for a hundred bucks. So again, it don't discourage things based on age on some items. It just depends. Russian items right now from the 80s, the Cold War era, are pretty hot. So the items do still go for a fairly decent amount of money for these type. Here's another vintage one. Now they've got pre-pro for pre-prohibition. Uh, it has some uh, manufacturers of actual beer and things like that in here. So that's why this one might be a little more collectible. And a lot of times the phone books actually have ads in them like this one does. So there may be some for actual uh, beer and such forth in here as well too. So 120 bucks on this one. And you can see it's not in great condition. Folded creases, corner issues, spine issues. Just all around, it's been hole punched as well too, so it could be hung. It's from 1916 though, so for 120 bucks, that's not too bad at all. Now here's one from Sherman, Texas. Uh, it's a directory book too, 1936, 80 bucks. It has other information and too. Again, advertisements on some of these. It's got advertisements on the back for Coca-Cola. It's got an ice company. Ice advertisings do go very well. Basically 80 bucks on this one. The Bronx, New York, 1955. 80 bucks basically, $77.76. Uh, they have historical research information, and that's what a lot of people do with these vintage books. So, you know, it just kind of ties somebody down to a certain area if they're like a genealogist or something like that. It may help track down lost family members or things too. So, there's many reasons someone may buy something like this. So, presenting the impatient squirrel and the sleepy bear. Watch, Jimmy. When you dial, you should make sure you bring your finger all the way around to the finger stop. Then for each number, let the dial go all the way back by itself. Each number, all the way. Then let go. See? Yes, sir. too long to answer. But if you're the person making the call, you should let the phone ring eight to ten times. See? Both of them are disappointed. Now here's a newer one, 72 from New York. New York, they made massive quantities, but it's a massive book with an artsy cover. They're, they're just were discarded for the most part. So in some cases, some are rare, even though they made tons of them, because most people aren't going to keep a New York City phone book in New York just because it takes up a ton of space. They're massive if you've seen one of these vintage ones. 76 bucks. Now, the next one's for Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. This is a directory of the employees and military personnel that were there in 1958. Now, I've been to Wright-Patterson. It's, it's in uh, Dayton, Ohio. It's right off of I-75. It's all lit up at night with blue lights that line up the actual museum building. There's a nice museum there, actually. You can walk and, and see some of the actual planes and such forth. This one went for 75 bucks. The military tie-in is why this one went for more money than probably a just a local Dayton phone book would have went for. Here's another one from Bay City in Saginaw, Michigan area, 1916. My father was born in Saginaw, Michigan, so we've had some Saginaw items that were in his possession. This one went for 75 bucks. Again, it's early, so that's part of the plus on these. And the last one here is a Duluth and Iron Range Railroad Railways book for telephone service in the area. This is a rather interesting one. It covers Duluth, uh, Minnesota, as well as some of the train and, and railroad information on it. $70.69. Again, you're not going to retire. You're not going to make a fortune. These are things that people miss. They don't think phone books are worth very much money. Even newer ones can go for some money. Even one from 20 or 30 years ago will go for some money if you get the right one. So, But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. There's another item that we do look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend. And now, 
the preposterous pachyderms. In other words, elephants. So like I said, I wanted to invite you to a party. Smarty, who are you calling a smarty? No, no, I said I'm giving a party at my house. Mouse? Don't you call me a mouse. What is the matter, Jimmy? Hello? I know. It's important to speak clearly on the phone so the other person can understand what you're saying. Right again, Jimmy. to make an important call for 25 minutes. But I simply must tell Irma about my new hat. Well, now, as I was saying before I was interrupted... It's selfish and impolite to hog the phone. Somebody may be waiting to use it. 